Do you hate your landlord? You wouldn't be alone if you do. Right now, it seems like even landlords don't like being landlords. I don't go around telling people that's my job title. The landlords are the bad guys. Rents are skyrocketing while landlords say they're selling up. And experts say we need more landlords. Do landlords really deserve a rebrand? Absolutely. So no one's happy, except maybe these guys. If you want to be rich, then do this. You buy a house now. This is how I bought this property in London for £50,000. Go on right move. I bought this house for £50,000. An incredible investment. Happy investing. Social media is full of influencers explaining how and why we should all be investing in property to rent out. But they don't call themselves landlords. James Coupland is one of those influencers. He agreed to fly back from a business trip in Dubai <laughs> to show me his properties in Hull. In this area, we have five. So there's kind of like one over there and then the other three are spread out. James is 28. He bought his first house at 20 and he's been buying, renovating and renting out houses ever since. So this is bedroom five. Okay. It's actually the biggest room. I didn't want it to feel like a student house. So we completely revamped the whole space. James buys rundown houses and renovates them, which usually means turning the living room into an extra bedroom. Then he rents out each room individually to maximize profit. But you don't call yourself a landlord? No, technically I am a landlord, but I don't go around telling people that's my job title. Why? You know, when I was growing up, landlord had this negative stereotype, this stigma that came with it. How does it feel to be called things like a parasite or a slumlord? They just don't understand what I'm doing. As you can see in this refurbishment, I put so much into it to make sure that my tenants are super happy with where they live. James says he bought his first house using a £39,000 student loan. The house was £53,000. But on hashtag property talk, there's no shortage of strategies to get you on the property ladder. Live with your parents, save up some money. Rent a property from a landlord and rent out the rooms individually. I would become a deal packager. Don't have to be your money, you get rich in that. And if that all sounds confusing, don't worry. Plenty of influencers also run. Intensive property programme. Everything I know about property investment. To learn how you can do this, join the James Property Academy. Right now, you can buy a course from James for about £200. And so far, he says he's had 1,700 people sign up. I want to disrupt the market for sure. I want to show people that property is a fantastic thing to get into. Some people would say they wish they didn't have to rent, but you're buying all the houses. Well, I'm not buying up all the properties. I'm trying to create a business for myself that makes me money, makes my family money. I'm not here to please everybody. I just need to do what I'm good at, which is running my property business and making sure that my tenants are happy. Okay, let's just pause there for a sec. Property influencers are telling young people there's lots of money to be made as a landlord. So do everything you can to get on the market. And if you don't know how, pay me and I'll teach you. But at the same time, you've got plenty of property owners saying it's a terrible time to be a landlord. It's pretty confusing. That's why I went to the UK's biggest meetup for landlords, where they can find tips on how to pay less tax, get a new mortgage and furnish their properties. There's a seminar in here today, warning not to sleep with your tenants. And lots of goodies to soothe the stress of managing tenants. Oh, and you can get a massage. Not everyone wanted to talk to us. Could we just ask you a couple of questions? No. So instead, I stopped by a panel event discussing the future for private landlords. Is actually dated. We need a new word. We need a new word. Like the influencer landlords, they'd prefer a rebrand. Maybe, you know, housing provider. Whatever. Then the session was opened up to questions. You're saying that landlords have been unfairly become the bad guys, that you should be called property investors and accommodation providers. But with rent skyrocketing and homelessness on the rise, do landlords really deserve a rebrand? Absolutely. Do uh, I don't think any of us are greedy fat cats. We provide housing. If we all left the market then there would be far less housing available for those underprivileged people you've just referred to. You wouldn't check that. After my question, suddenly lots of people wanted to talk to me. It's the 80-20 rule. 80% great landlords, 20% poor landlords. The perception is the landlords are the bad guys, just like the bankers were the bad guys. Years ago, it was the government telling us not to rely on a state pension. Uh, we've built our portfolios and now we're, you know, we're ready for retirement. 
and now the government's after us. In the last few years, landlords say the government has introduced a range of policies that make it less profitable. Add to that soaring mortgage rates and new reform that will make it harder to evict tenants, and almost everyone I spoke to said being a landlord isn't what it used to be. My property has gone up from 595 per month. So I'm now having to ask my tenants for 1400 which is still leaving me in deficit, £200 every month, and I feel guilty asking her for that. What can you do, particularly here in the UK, if you have an extra property, it just burns a hole in your pocket? And most landlords are good landlords. They try to look after their tenants, but it's a business at the end of the day. If you're not making money, what's the point? Whether you like it or not, the experts are clear. Fewer landlords means fewer rental properties. That means poorer conditions and higher rental prices. We absolutely need landlords. <laughs> we need even more landlords than we have. Because not everybody can afford to own their home. The data is hard to pin down, but all the experts we've spoken to agree there is evidence that landlords are leaving the market. So are we being too tough on them? It's a little bit of misplaced blame in a way. There's a danger that if we squeeze too much, then good landlords, decent people will get out and that will leave the field to the rogues and we don't, we don't want that, we want decent, honest people in the market. And those rogues everyone goes on about are a serious problem. The government's new renting reform doesn't mention funding to help local authorities crack down on those rogues, like campaigners have called for. But it will require landlords to join an online database, introduce a private rental sector ombudsman to deal with complaints, and enforce the decent home standard, which is crucial because almost a quarter of privately rented properties currently don't meet it. And Section 21, or no-fault evictions, have finally been banned after a huge rise in recent years. But landlords will still be able to evict tenants if they want to sell or move in, and it won't stop them raising rents, which means tenants like Kiara, a teacher in London, are still at risk. Kiara lives in a new house now, with her husband Ben and their daughter Maggie. But on Christmas Eve last year, they were told the rent would be going up in their old place. We received an email from the letting agent that our contract was finally ready to sign, but with a £300 a month increase in rent. The windows in Maggie's room, there's water between the panes. She says the house was in a state of disrepair. We had a massive moth infestation, really severe damp and mould. Eventually the bath went through the floor because the floor was so rotten. Like if Maggie had a cough, I would worry that it was caused by the damp or the mould. Kiara told her letting agent they wouldn't accept a rent hike unless repairs were made. A few weeks later, she was told her landlord was selling and they were issued a Section 21 eviction notice. I just was devastated. I don't know um, how else to describe it. She knew we were a family. She knew we had a young child. She knew the flat was in disrepair. Why do you think you were issued that eviction notice? Because our landlady didn't want to pay for repairs. Kiara doesn't think abolishing no-fault evictions will solve the problem. Landlords will still be able to evict tenants if they want to sell their property or move back in which is, I feel like, essentially a Section 21 without calling it that. Many landlords that we've spoken to say they have to raise the rent because their mortgage repayments are going up and the cost of living is going up. What do you make of that? I think it is reasonable if you're asking your tenants to pay more if your mortgage has gone up, but then you have to hold up your end of the bargain and you have to allow them to live without stress and worry and disrepair. We reached out to Kiara's landlord, but she didn't want to comment for this film. The landlords we spoke to said they look after their tenants. And while almost half the country say they dislike landlords, most private renters say they're happy with their own. So if traditional landlords are leaving, are TikTok landlords the answer? Buying and renovating unlivable houses is helpful, but the overwhelming message from social media is that this is a way to make money. And what if there was a way to make even more money as a landlord that was even less regulated? Airbnb. Who needs tenants when you can have guests? I'm only a small fish. I've only bought one Airbnb. Yeah, but you see the problem if everyone did what you were doing, there wouldn't be anywhere else for people to live. That's not what I'm doing. People have way more properties than I do. I'm just better at getting the message out in terms of what I do and what I enjoy teaching people. But you're teaching people to do what you're doing. Exactly. But I'm not buying up large plots of land. The 1,700 people who you've trained, if they all went out and bought an Airbnb, that's 1,700 less properties for other people to rent or buy. Okay then, so then we have to look at another solution. We need to be building more homes, more affordable homes. Now, I have a relatively small portfolio. I'm just giving really good service and, and, and refurbs. 
James isn't wrong. Britain needs more houses and the rental crisis needs solutions. But here's the problem. For most landlords, the rental sector is about making money. So if they think that's too hard, they'll leave, while influencers like James find new ways to navigate a broken system to their advantage. There's nothing wrong or illegal about that, it just won't help the millions of people who are already struggling with the rental market. Ultimately, and experts agree, the market needs to work better for everyone. The government has finally announced rental reform that they've been promising for years. So maybe things will improve soon, who knows? But even if that does happen, you still don't have to like your landlord.